wild women in the deep east Texas woods. They read some good books and party with the authors and have more fun than you think they could. Wild, wicked, and free, they're the Pumpwood Queens. Pumpwood Queens. Wild, wicked. Hi, everybody. I'm Kathy Patrick. Welcome to Beauty in the Book. If you looked up prolific in the dictionary, you would find the name Lisa C., who is an author, writer, who has researched many, many wonderful stories. And she's going to be talking about her breathtaking, beautiful bestseller, Shanghai Girls, and its sequel, Dreams of Joy. Welcome, Lisa. Hi. Hi. Shanghai Girls is a story about two sisters. Can you tell me a little bit about it? It's about two sisters who leave Shanghai in 1937. They're what were called beautiful girls, these models for Shanghai advertising. And they leave Shanghai in 1937 and come to Los Angeles in arranged marriages. And so this is a story of sort of immigration, but really it's a story of sisters. Well, I learned a lot of new things about the culture, too. Beautiful girls, let's talk a little bit about that. Well, these beautiful girls were models for advertising, and this they were selling this kind of new modern Chinese woman. And so these posters that are selling things like cigarettes and perfume and oil for your car show these young women doing very modern things, diving into pools, stepping out of pools, driving cars, drinking champagne, dancing in nightclubs, because again they were showing this modern Chinese woman who was going to help transform the country. What was interesting is the fact that you took history and you're giving us all this history of Shanghai in a way that you forget you're getting a history mm -hmm. lesson. That is a talent. So Shanghai at that time was considered the Paris of Asia. It was a very glamorous city and people had literally come from all over the world to be in this Paris of Asia. So it was this incredibly diverse, vibrant, exciting city. And the reason that I chose 1937 mm -hmm. was that this was the final, final moment 1937, before things changed. Uh, the Japanese invaded in 1937, the Sino-Japanese War rolled right into World War II, and then Mao took over the country in 1949. And almost overnight, Shanghai had gone from being, you know, the Paris of Asia to being this very gray, grim city. One of the other things that you brought up in the book is the film industry. You know, Pearl and May are in Shanghai. They come to Los Angeles. They work, you know, in, in these sort of fake Hollywood versions of China. They were always making movies, right? And they would need extras. And so there were these uh, people in Chinatown who hired Chinese to send out to movie sets as extras, and this was huge. And then once World War II came, and there were all those World War II movies, you know, with the Japanese, well, the Japanese were interned, right? So they would hire Chinese to play the roles of the Japanese soldiers. What is amazing about the book is how you end it, because you end it with this great lead in to your next book. Now I have to be honest here and tell you that when I first plotted out Shanghai Girls it was going to go from 1937 to 2007 and I had gotten about a hundred pages in and I was still in 1937 <laughs> so I thought well hmm I'm never getting to 2007 and I looked at what I had I realized okay I'm only going to be able to go so far and that I'll end in 1957. Everyone who read the book would say but what's going to happen next? Right. But what's going to happen next? You have to write the sequel. But this Dreams of Joy? Dreams of Joy, to me, it's, there's sort of two parts. The first half is the f act of finding the daughter, Joy. You know, Joy is the name of the daughter. Right. And the second part is about finding actual emotional joy. I look so forward to Dreams of Joy. Now we're going to the Pacific Asia Museum to see some real art of beautiful girls. Thank you. 
This museum originally was a house belonging to a woman named Grace Nicholson, and she built this Chinese house. And now, of course, it's a museum. And right now, they're having this exhibit on Chinese um, poster art, and this is really sort of the origin of the beautiful girl posters. In the early days, it was packaging for things like soap and nylon stockings, and that kind of poster art gradually evolved into these larger posters. Now here they are, the beautiful girls. To me, these look a lot like Pearl and May, don't you think? Absolutely. So, which one's which? Well, this has to be May, that has to be Pearl. So once Pearl and May come to the United States, they're no longer beautiful girls and they work in a cafe and little gift shops and they make a particular kind of Chinese American dish and one of them was called curried tomato beef. Now that's also a dish that was very, very big in my family and so I thought we could go over to my house and I could teach you how to make it. Let's go. Okay. Tonight we're going to be making what I call three generation curried tomato beef lo mein. First you put a little bit of just uh, vegetable oil in the wok and you start heating it up. Yeah. And this is something that uh, we've been making in my family for years and years and years. Over time this, is, this recipe has now come down to me. Now I do marinate the mm -hmm. meat in soy sauce, sesame oil, and some sherry. So now I'm going to put in the beef. And with any stir fry, you know, you just want to make it go pretty fast. You don't want things to overcook. Okay, so now I'm adding chopped bell pepper and onion. I'm going to add some curry, sugar, and then this is just plain old vinegar. Got it. And then just at the last minute, you just add these fresh, beautiful tomatoes. Okay, this looks about ready to me. Here we have just the noodles that I cooked a little earlier. To top it off, just some fresh cilantro, just to make it really pretty. Mmm, mmm, very good. This was quite a dish. I think it's time to make you look like a dish. Let's go do that makeover. Let's do it. make you really look like one of the beautiful girls. Sounds like great fun. You don't look Chinese, really don't. Uh, explain I get that, that question all the time. <laughs> really? Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm an eighth Chinese. An eighth, okay. Just an eighth, my, but I come from a very, very large Chinese-American family. I feel curls all around. And now, Lisa C. as a beautiful girl, voila! Oh, how fun is that? I love it. Thank you so much. Welcome everybody, we're here with the Empress Book Club of Los Angeles. I know they all have questions to ask Lisa about her book. Who wants to begin? As a uh, nonfiction reader, you're one of the few fiction writers that captivates me. I always get a Lisa C. book because your research is so pitch perfect. I do all of my own research. I'm a research fanatic. It's actually my favorite part of the whole process. It's a combination of going to China, eating everything that people eat in that book, but also interviewing people. If there was one thing you were going to say about Dreams of Joy for all of us that have not read it, what would you want to share? There's actually a lot of sadness and a lot of hardship in Dreams of Joy, but it's called Dreams of Joy for a reason. Um, first of all, the, it's, there's the character of Joy, the daughter, and this kind of search to find her. But it's also a search for the emotion of Joy. What I think has been kind of fun in Dreams of Joy, even though May 
you never actually see her mm -hmm. because she's in the United States and and uh, Pearl is has gone back to China but you actually hear from May through letters and it's her pure voice un, unfiltered by by Pearl it's been a pleasure and a joy to talk with author Lisa C about her book Shanghai Girls and her sequel Dreams of Joy Lisa C. taught me what the word Shanghai means. Do you know? Go to our website to enter our Beauty in the Book giveaway. Ten people with the correct answer will be chosen at random to get a free copy of Dreams of Joy by Lisa C.